I want to ask some questions about um, you as an investor. How long have you been working with this company? Since 2007. I, I quit it at Baby Bjorn in 2004, and then I actually went through Connect, a great uh, network for mm. uh, business angels mm. and entrepreneurs. And I actually looked through like 100 companies before I actually picked this one. But realized that I wanted to do the baby beyond thing again you know want to be part of the trip and you know make the success myself not just you know put in the money mm. so you're actually uh what you call like a working investor you work in the company with the founder of the company and not all, all investors do that and i think also a lot of startups don't understand that there is this type of investor that you actually can have someone who comes into your company and help you with all the knowledge you have. So why did you choose to do that? Was it because of the you wanted to do the baby beyond like a journey again? Well, I realized, you know, doing the other investments before that, you know, just putting a few hundred thousand uh, Swedish crowns into the company you know, it's such a big uh, risk that you lose the money. Mm. Uh, so I really wanted to make sure that this investment is going to be, you know, a great investment for me and also for uh, the, the entrepreneur. I mean, he has put in so much effort into this even before I met him. So his name is Beckett Colon and he's actually born in the States but lived here in Sweden for 25 years something oh. so he speaks Swedish and um, and I really wanted to be part of the you know making the success you know we talked about you know being an investor who's actually involved in working with a company and um, that means that you both go in with money but you also start working with the actual entrepreneur and that's a bit different a lot of people haven't uh, investors who just go in with money and they kind of stay you know, back here. So what do you think is the difficulties or, and also like the, what, what's the good part about being this kind of investor? Uh, well, the good part for me is that I'm grown up with an entrepreneur. So, I mean, it's nothing weird to actually meet this, you know, super smart, like really uh, vis- uh, guy that has like the huge vision about, you know, um, disrupting a- an industry. Uh, so that's been really natural for me to mm. work with uh, uh, Beckett uh, Colon, this, the, the inventor of uh, Performance Gate uh, and the founder of the company. Uh, well, actually, he's made me a co-founder mm. <laughs> now. But uh, I think that a lot of investors, if they have made their money you know, outside the entrepreneurial world, mm. they might have really big problems because they get shocked. I mean, if they have made them from a bank or like just you know stocks stocks or you know if they they don't have the entrepreneurial mind they get a shock because it's a totally different world and you need to be like uh, not crazy but open-minded and thinking outside the box and always looking for solutions and uh, you know like your your will to succeed must be greater than your your uh, fear to to fail mm. and i think a lot of investors that we have met that have made their money some other way they are so scared to fail <laughs> they're so scared to fail so that they you know they shouldn't invest in a startup i i, I agree i see a lot of um, these kind of these two different um, like kind of camps of investors, the ones who are used to entrepreneurs have made their money in business around business somehow, and then the ones who have made it in very traditional non entrepreneurial ways, and the ones who come from 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 that side, they don't understand the importance of team. We've had so many discussions with investors around this, like the team, importance of team and how that's changing actually in kind of the angel investment kind of area that people are understanding more and more. Like you have to understand this part. And if yeah. you don't, you have to bring in someone who can actually see that and, and, and look at the team from that uh, like angle. And if you have the entrepreneurial experience, you know what kind of personality you will meet and what yeah. that means for the company. And also, I think you need to have like a, a, a little bit of distance and sense of humor because it's like uh, Beckett when I came into the company it's like okay I'll make you the president because you're the least bad of the two of us <laughs> you know <laughs> so I mean it's like okay now this is what we have 
And then we found Fagner Pereira, this great uh, guy that is our team manager now. And okay, so this is what we have. Uh, we still don't have the CFO guy, mm. but it's really hard to, to find a CFO that is actually able to, to work in this kind of uh, team. So we're looking for a CFO. If there is one out there, they <laughs> could actually... That's know. exactly what I do, see the Cedar Wood Company. It's exactly this, because most yeah. people in finance don't understand entrepreneurs, don't understand the tech industry and this fast-paced startup world. And that is really like can become such uh, problem for the founders because you have to focus on finance which is probably not their strength if they're entrepreneurs and they don't get the help they need with the money when they get the investment and that can really make the company stumble yeah so the lucky thing with us is that Beckett is like super intelligent and he has like totally insights of the whole industry he knows Mm -hmm. like everyone and he's really capable of doing like a great budget like a three-year budget Uh, But that body is, is of course, like from after founding. So then, you know, I (laughs) I, uh, need to explain for the investors that, well, this is the bridge financing till we get bank financing. Because uh, since we are like so close to getting uh, licensing uh, money from the factories, Mm. I mean, we're not gonna really need uh, uh, any more uh, founding from investors soon. I mean, we even the banks are coming to us and telling us, like, I mean, as the day you have, you know, this licensing uh, money coming in, you can bank finance your growth. So, but it's uh, like when you are a little bit before that money coming into your account, then then uh, most CFOs are really. Yeah, wondering what what's up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting that you say that about like actually getting financing from banks, etc. Because this is typical for physical products that you have something tangible that they can bet their money on as a bank that they mostly can't do with um, service companies because they, for them there's like there's no assets for us to kind of bet you know, that this yeah. is what we're going to take if you fail, yeah. pretty much. And that's what you can do with a product company. And that's a really hard system to understand. But you have experience from Baby Bjorn, so I guess that's... Yeah, uh, so that's why it was super important for me with that, the, the first of all, that the pra- product actually solve real product problems. Yeah. You know, that the, there are uh, uh, real people out there that actually want the products. Mm. and. Uh, but also that there is uh, patents, uh, because then I know when you have patents, you just need the proof of concept with enough people. So like now we have sold over 20,000 uh, decks and 50,000 of the replacement tips. So now the banks uh, are coming to us and saying like, now you have enough proof of concept, now you can bank finance. But we want to you know, have a, a more turnover before we let the banks in. <laughs> Um, it's blinking. Does that mean it's going to die? Is blinking it the, the battery? The, there's the light down here. It's blinking. Yeah, it's going to die the, soon. The we'll wrap up this part and then we take yeah. a break and we'll yeah. have the battery and then we do the second part. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I think also um, that's a lot something that I don't think a lot of startup entrepreneurs understand about banks. I, I hear sometimes new entrepreneurs, they go to a bank and think they're going to get a loan for a business idea. Mm. But actually, this is the only way to get yeah. <laughs> pretty much a loan. It's like, oh, you have sold 50,000 of your product. Oh, 20 of those. Great. Yeah. Then they're interested. Otherwise, it's pretty much impossible. And also, I think it's really bad off like Almi or whoever, like saying, oh, you can get a loan from us. And uh, before you have that uh, income on selling products, because then you you need to sell shares to be able to sell to pay the interest to uh, Alme, which is like a governmental uh, institution here in Sweden. So I mean, you don't really want loans that have if you need to pay the interest every month, which you do for banks or mm. uh, governmental institutions. I mean, so it's grants is great. I mean, in the startup process and uh, uh, investors that actually give you uh, like a convertible loan and then that you if they don't convert, you know, you, you pay back the day that you, you're you able to pay it back. So, I mean, that's really dangerous with getting the banks 
too early too. So the banks are probably doing good saying no, you mm. know, before. Because <laughs> that's the problem, like loans you actually have to pay back, even if there's no company left. Yes. <laughs>